Hello everyone, how are you doing? I'll go ahead and switch over to... We'll, we'll give you guys some footage here. Uh, this, what you're looking at, is going to be some of what is released in the update that will be coming next Sunday, I believe it is. Uh, hold on a sec. Check my calendar. Yeah, it should be about five days from now. This and about th oh, three and a half more hours of footage similar to it of the interior, for the most part, will be coming out. And we are reorganizing the James Cameron collection to a, a new format. It's, it's very similar to what you guys have seen in the NOAA 2003 stuff, but it's it, it's just been reorganized for the James Cameron section since we now have 2001 and 2005 footage. So it'll be organized by expedition and then by deck, but you're not going to have to faff around with links and that sort of thing. So how is everyone? I, uh, I will be answering any questions that you guys have. Uh, I just put them in the chat, and I will answer them as they come in. I do also want to talk while I'm here a bit about some of the future plans that we've got for the Archive Project. We've been working on some things that, while I'm not able to say that they are going to happen. They are things that we would really like to do, and we're quite excited about those. So once we get a few more people sitting in here, we'll, uh, we'll get talking about those. And I will probably have a preview that I can show you guys here in, oh, a few minutes, just to show you kind of what we're doing. If you guys are uh, looking for a community, by the way, I will put a link here in Discord. I did announce this first in Discord, and there is a, a decent community that's popped up around the Archive Project in Discord. So I will go ahead and... Uh, let's see. Cameron Houseman, are you on stream at the moment? If you are, I may make you a moderator for the chat, but I don't have a link on me for the Discord, and you created that, so I would uh, I would like to have that sent in if you can. Where's your channel invites? So, um, we have been getting questions in our comment section on Facebook, so one of the things I was thinking of doing here, we're going to go through some of those. Uh, there have been some more frequently asked things that I was wanting to go over at some point for people. One moment. All right. So we have been getting questions about particular sets of footage and whether or not we have those sets of footage and whether or not we're planning on adding them. Uh, one of the things we've been hearing lately is, I believe, the 1990s dives, uh, 97, 98, um, with Ifermer and the James Cameron dives from 95 and 96. Uh, I believe we've also been asked about the 2001 expedition in specific. We had somebody asking about that yesterday and whether we were going to be adding footage from James Cameron's filming Ghosts of the Abyss. They had questions about particular sets of that footage. And so what you're seeing here on screen is footage from, oh, I believe this is 2001, but I'm going to double check before I commit to having 2001 view what this is. Let's see, where did it is? Okay. We have on screen, this is, this is, this is 2005. So this is 2005. We have coming out on Sunday, there's going to be 14 new sets of footage from 2005 and another 10 from 2001. 
we found out recently James Cameron filmed about 50 hours worth of ROV footage, is what we were told. And we're hoping to add as much of that as we can find. Unfortunately, the challenge with a lot of this footage isn't posting it once we have it. It's just getting a hold of it in the first place. A lot of the time this footage is either locked behind paywalls or it's licensed out to a company somewhere with the intent of making a documentary that they either make it and it contains very little footage or they don't ever make the documentary that they were talking about. But when they finish the documentaries or don't finish them, they still hold on to the licensing for the footage in case they ever want to do something with it. And in most cases, they just don't. So what we've been able to find is obviously a very, very small section of what all is out there in terms of what's been filmed at the rec site. But there is a lot more out there that we're working on finding. It's just navigating the, the minefield of legal issues that sits around most of this footage. A lot of James Cameron's footage from the early 2000s, if I'm not mistaken, was licensed out to Discovery and National Geographic. And their contracts, in short, don't expire. So a lot of that footage has been locked behind walls of legal crap that aren't going to expire until the people who hold the rights to that footage decide that they don't want it anymore. Which is one of the reasons we've been aiming at becoming a 501c3 status nonprofit. Uh, we're hoping that we can work with companies and organizations that have a lot of this footage that want payment for it because we're a small team, uh, four people, all volunteers, and we don't have necessarily the resources to just pay these companies outright for this footage, especially in bulk. There were... Actually, this comes up with the 1980s footage we've been asked about several times uh, in our Facebook comments. People talking about how they want to see the footage from the Discovery or the, the cameras on Argo in the 1985 and 1986 expedition, the Alvin footage and all that sort of thing. We actually talked to someone at Woods Hole a, f a few months ago about the prospect of having that donated to the archive. And they told us, in short, that unless we were willing to shell out about I think it was around $50 per second of footage, we just weren't going to get it. Because the way they're set up is more for licensing small amounts of footage under an hour to companies that want to make documentaries and not necessarily archives that want to publish it in bulk for the public to see. And we ran the math on it. It'd be something around $1.4 million for eight hours of footage, which we calculated to eight hours because on an average dive, you tend to get about eight hours of footage from one camera. So to have an eight-hour dive donate or to give us their footage uh, from Woods Hole, it would cost us about $1.4 million, which, as controversial as the Ocean Gate expedition is, they're charging, what is it, $125,000, $130,000 for a ticket, and we could feasibly dive on Titanic about 10 to 15 times for what it would cost to license eight hours of footage from Woods Hole. So when we achieve 501c3 status uh, for our nonprofit organization. Our hope is that we can work with organizations that want that kind of payment uh, because part of what 501c3 status is going to give us as a tax exempt nonprofit is the ability to have donations to our project be written off on taxes. So if someone were to donate a large amount of money, they could write in on their taxes that they donated that sum of money to a nonprofit with 501c3 status and get a tax refund. So the hopes are that we can use that sort of benefit with companies and organizations like Woods Hole that want exorbitant amounts of money for the footage that they have to allow us to publish it. Uh, if they donate it, we may be able to give them a write-off so that they can cover what they would have gained from that donation otherwise in a tax write-off. So that is something that we're hoping to do, but up until we get a hold of that status, it's going to be very difficult to license any sort of footage that people want payment for. Everything that we've got so far has been given to us free of charge and with the ability to publish it for no cost. Um, in regards to James Cameron's footage from the 2000s, 
I think I mentioned a lot of that's Discovery and National Geographic. We haven't been able to get a hold of anyone in National Geographic or Discovery who's been willing to work with us on publishing that. So far, we have reached out and talked to people, but I personally haven't gotten replies from any of them. But it is something that we are looking into as best as we can. Um, Cyarch. They are where we've been able to source most of the James Cameron footage that we have from. Uh, back in 2012, 2013, around that time frame, a lot of the footage that James Cameron filmed on his expeditions in the early 2000s was donated to Cyarch for what they were calling their Titanic Database Project, which was essentially what the Archive Project is, but they were wanting to do it first. Unfortunately, after he donated that, they had it up on their website, or at least some pieces of it were up on their website for a very brief period of time. And then sometime after that, they redesigned their website, removed all of the footage that they had from James Cameron's expeditions. And now if you go to their website, they have something talking about the database project and talking about the footage that was donated to them. But if you follow the links, there's nothing that will get you to this footage. And so around the time the archive project was first being talked about uh, by our team, we reached out to CyArk and talked to them about the possibility of using footage that some of our team members already had just in their collections uh, and publishing that. And that's where a large majority of our James Cameron footage came from, was they gave us permission to use what we already had. We tried to talk to someone about the possibility of getting a hold of more of the footage that was originally intended for the database project, but they didn't respond to us on that one. So we haven't given up on that yet, but we got seven hours out of what we believe to be around 50 hours of footage from James Cameron's expeditions that CyArk had a hold of. Uh, our NOAA 2003 archive, we have 24 hours of footage currently, I believe it is. This was an expedition that, I'm going to have to double check this, I believe James Cameron had the majority of the time on that expedition for filming. And what we have is not from James Cameron, it's from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, who managed to reserve two days for dives on that particular expedition. And if you go into our new NOAA 2003 section, it, it's not necessarily obvious, but what we have are four total sets of footage. Uh, we have two sets from Mir 1 and two sets from Mir 2 that were recorded around the same time on two separate days as they were diving in tandem. And that was two days out of something around a month-long expedition that James Cameron had the majority of time to film on. And so we have the 24 hours from Noah's portion of that expedition, but we're missing a large majority of the 2003 expedition. Uh, we are hopeful, I'd say, that we'll be able to find the rest of the footage from the 2003 expedition. I believe, personally, um, that some of that footage may be in CyArk's holdings. The remaining I think, 43 hours that they have that we haven't been given access to. And I believe that the 2003 expedition footage from James Cameron, some of it at least, may be in that collection. Uh, going through this, we've learned Jake and Elwood were on the 2005 expedition, same as 2001, so there may be more interior footage from 2003 if they were along on that ride as well. Okay. So, I'm going to sidetrack here for a minute. We had a few other questions in our comments section that I was wanting to answer. Okay, so I did mention the, the 90s dives already. I was just seeing that question again. Oh, we have had people asking about the possibility of doing photo mosaics with our footage, uh, particularly of the stern section from 2003. We haven't ruled that out. Uh, that's kind of been the standard thing we've been saying in comments is we haven't ruled it out, but it's not a priority. The main reason for this We've been looking at the feasibility of doing a stern mosaic from the 2003 footage. And when we went to go look over it, we figured the stern footage that we have covers about 60 to 70% of the stern from an overhead view. And 
unless we can get a hold of more footage from that time frame, we would not be able to do a complete mosaic of the stern. The bow is another story. We might be able to pull off a mosaic from the bow. If we were to do so, the only issue we've run into there is that a lot of the footage, particularly in the well deck area, is that a lot of it's very murky. Uh, they tried mosaicing on, I believe it was their first day of dives for Noah on that expedition, and the water clarity was not great. Uh, they were hovering, I think 10 meters was their target altitude above the wreck, and they made their passes at 10 meters, but as you cross over from the forecastle into the well deck area, that altitude ends up making it so that you can't really make out much detail on the well deck. So we've looked at doing a bow section photo mosaic because we know we have complete coverage. It's just that murkiness that's making it a bit more difficult to actually stitch together a, a mosaic. And the process is exceptionally long-winded as well. Uh, we had our team member, our team member, uh, Lee Jones 2020, I believe. Uh, what happens when the bots both malfunction and you cannot get them back? What would happen? Well, it's um, it's a situation that hasn't happened, uh, so there's obviously no precedent for this. I would imagine they would have to send down another one, <laughs> I guess. It depends on where they malfunction. If you had a, I guess, a situation where somehow both tethers ended up severed simultaneously outside the wreck... Uh, and they floated to the surface. I believe they had GPS transponders in them. So if they floated to the surface, the expedition crew would be able to send out a boat to go recover them from the surface. If both of them were lost in the interior, I can't say for sure. I know that there would be efforts to retrieve them, but unless they had another ROV capable of getting in to the wreckage to where both of them had malfunctioned, they, they just wouldn't be able to. Um, I don't know if there are any bots smaller than Jake and Elwood that have been sent down to Titanic, but I know that in the modern era, there are ROVs capable of getting down to Titanic that should be of similar or smaller size. It's been interesting to see in the last few years, there's been a bit of a consumer market opening up for, uh, that people like to refer to them as underwater drones, I guess. Uh, and most of the ones that are available commercially you can buy them for anywhere 500 to $2,000 for one that's able to be used by your average person. And they're not quite capable of reaching that depth, but there are sites that you can buy um, commercial or even military grade ROVs that they're around 15 to 20,000. And some of them are fairly small. So I'd imagine it would just be a case of finding another ROV capable of getting to the wreck, sending it down and recovering them. Uh, it, it might have to be something that they did on a separate expedition, though. They might just end up having to leave them there. It's uh, very fortunate, I'd say, that it didn't actually happen on the 2001 expedition. Um, you've all likely seen Ghosts of the Abyss at this point, and you'll know that on the first dive where they were attempting to recover Elwood, Jake's tether was severed in the Grand Staircase, and he managed to float out, but... Uh, if he had been much further into the wreck, it's entirely likely that that sort of situation would have happened. And um, I, I honestly don't know what they would have been able to do. So the footage that's uh, rolling across the screen right about now, there's a... I don't know if I'd call it famous, but it's a relatively well-known photograph uh, that was taken by an ROV sitting on the prow, looking out towards the, the railing and out over the just the open water ahead of the bow, where they have kind of a ghostly overlighting thing. And we have two sets of footage from this particular moment here. One, this is from Jake, and you can see Elwood sitting ahead of you there. I don't remember if it's this particular video that actually has the original frame from that photo, but this footage was filmed when that photo was taken, and it's a uh, one of my personal favorite photos of the ship. It looks quite nice, like a ghostly moonlighting over the prow. But this, I, I know that the prow and the forecastle are sort of, I don't know that I'd say they're overshown. They're, they're overshown. 
camera crews tend to focus on it because it's very photogenic, but I will say that sometimes there are just new angles that I haven't seen before that they, they do just tend to look nice. I've been to the Titanic exhibition a few times in Liverpool. I'm wondering if the items are replica or original. Uh, which exhibition was that, Lee? I don't know for sure what artifacts you're referring to. I'm imagining some of them are original. Um, second, I will take a quick look. Was this the one at the Merseyside Maritime Museum? Okay, so I was looking around. I, I, I do recognize some of these artifacts. Uh, it looks like some of them are from, not necessarily the night the ship sank, but they are from when it was being built. There are some that are from the night the ship sank, but the model of the ship that you saw there is believed to be the builder's model that was used as reference and kind of as a promotional thing as the ship was being built in Belfast. They have, uh, I know they have an original frame that's a casing that they used to cast the portholes for the ship. So it's not an original porthole, but it was used to make the portholes that were on the ship. They have, um, oh, what were they? Uh, oh yeah, the full pins for the lifeboats that are authentic. And they have uh, a gown worn by a survivor on the night the ship sank. So there are, I believe it's a, it's a mix of authentic and replica. Uh, the lifeboat nameplate they have in their collection, though, that is authentic. Um, I've, I forget what the name of the survivor was, but it was presented to a survivor, I think it might have been the Countess of Ross, that was gifted that by the, let's see, it was gifted, yeah, it was gifted to the Countess of Ross, uh, it was lifeboat number eight, uh, they had a lifeboat number from it that was authentic, and it was taken off of the boat by a crewman that was in the boat at the time the ship went down, and they were very admirable of the Countess of Roth's ability to keep calm during the entire night. So they pulled off the number from the lifeboat that she had been rescued in and gifted it to her on a plaque, and then she eventually donated it to a museum. So that would have been authentic as well. Okay, I'm going to go check our comments section for some more questions that are asked regularly. Because we, we have had quite a few questions that are asked multiple times, and I, I did want to answer a few of those. Well, this was a very spontaneous stream, so I do apologize for the casualness of the whole thing. I do have something that I wanted to share with you guys here in just a moment. I'm just going to double check and see if I've gotten to the majority of the questions. Okay, well, here, let's... We're getting near to the end of this particular bit of footage, so while this is running its course, I am going to pull up something that I have been quite excited about. So, as, as most of you guys are well aware, um, James Cameron's footage is, for the most part, in 480p or lower quality. Uh, most of it's standard definition or below. Uh, we have been experimenting with this, and before I get too far into this, I need to say we cannot guarantee that this is going to happen. Uh, but it's something that we're very much looking into. I see your link here, Lee. I will take a look at that here in just a moment. I, I want to just get through this first, but then I will take a look at those photos, and I can try and go through on an individual basis and see if what you're looking at is authentic there. Um, as far as the James Cameron footage being in lower quality, 
uh, than I suppose any of us would really like. We have been looking into 4K upscaling, and while we haven't done a long format test of this yet. We have found some software that has shown us some very, very promising results. And while this does take a colossal amount of time, uh, I think we converted a five minute clip the other day that took four hours or so to render. And I'll show you this clip here in a bit. We've been looking at upscaling James Cameron's videos uh, to full HD, or in some cases we're even able to pull 4K copies out of sections of that footage. If we were going to do this, we need to license some software that we've been experimenting with. It's going to be about a $300 purchase, and we're going to... It's going to take probably several months to get through, because while the process is going on, it basically renders our PCs completely unusable, just due to the amount of processing power it takes to do this. Um, <laughs> my PC is absolutely no slouch by any means, but I have never seen anything take so much performance to to just render. Uh, but I will show you guys here in just a minute the preliminary results from one of our tests, because it was quite cool. Uh, the results are not full 4K yet. They're also best viewed on a large screen, so if you're seeing this on a phone, the, the results are not going to be quite as obvious. They'll, they'll be better, but not quite perfect yet. And when we did this experiment, this was not a full 4K upscaling. This was, I believe, we went from 688 by 480 resolution to... Oh, Lord, what was it? It was... 2510 by 1920. So it's... A, it's better than full HD, but not quite true 4K, was what we ended up doing with this one. And I'm going to go ahead and just get that set up to start. I think I've maybe killed this particular video here, but that is fine, because I do want to show you guys this. I think you will be quite excited about it. We are. We are quite excited about this. Um... Where did it go? Here it is. Okay, so ooh, that is way there. We go. Okay, let's get that centered. I'm gonna start it over for you. This, I believe, is only going to be broadcasting in full HD, but you should be able to notice. Oh, we'll that is our previous one. There it is. Okay. So this is a section of footage from the interior. Uh, obviously down near D-Deck in the reception room. I believe this is the port side entrance vestibule. That you'd have the gangway doors on the outboard side and then it would enter into the A-Deck elevator lobby. But this has been upscaled from 688 by 480 to 2510 by 1920. So it's almost true 4K, although I don't believe, like I said, that it is going to be broadcasting in that particular format. The results are most obvious on a large screen. Uh, I, I tested this on a 4K TV about two days ago, and it worked exceptionally well. It was most obvious close up. All the blocky artifacting that you tend to get, it seems to have been cleared up as far as upscaling goes, it's one of the more promising experiments I've seen. Um, we are wanting to attempt to do this with the entire archive. I cannot promise that, that is going to happen. Uh, like I said, it's exceptionally resource intensive and it ties down our computers for hours at a time. This is a five minute clip here and it took almost four hours to render and we have, uh, with the, the new update coming out next week, we're gonna have about 34 hours of footage and as a rough approximation, you can expect footage to take about 40 times its length to render. So if it's a minute long, it'll take about 40 minutes to render as an upscaled video. And that's on my particular PC. Uh, we have some that are a little better, some that are a bit slower. But in order to do it, it would, it would take us months 
So if we are going to do this, it'll end up being rolled out small parts at a time, probably just one video at a time, maybe once a week uh, is what we'd aim for. But the results have been very promising. We're quite excited about it. And if we were able to upscale things, uh, even the... Um, okay, so as I was saying, the upscaling, it works for low definition videos, but it's also going to be much more prominent on higher definition footage. So if we were to, say, acquire the footage from 2010, which was filmed in HD, that would be a much more reasonable bit of footage to upscale to something even as high as 8K, even though most TVs and computer displays are not capable of properly displaying 8K, uh, what we have found in terms of software is capable of upscaling to 8K. Um, the higher the resolution is, generally the better results are going to be, more so if you have a gap between your input and your output, like this was 688 by 480 upscaled to nearly 4K. So the results, while they are good and quite pleasant to look at, I must say, um, it's not as good as it could be if, say, this footage was full HD being upscaled to 4K. So, as I said, it's not anything we can promise currently, but it's something that we've experimented with, we are happy with the results that we've got, and it, it's definitely something we're wanting to look into. Uh, okay, we you had a message you sent a link here that I was supposed to go look at. So I will do that now. Okay. All right, so this uh, this first one shows the 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 model here. This is the builder's model. Um, at least it's supposed to be. I've seen some back and forth as to whether or not this is the original builder's model of Titanic or if it's uh, Britannic that's been restored to Titanic, but I know that this particular model was missing for a very, very long time, and they ended up finding what they believed was the Titanic builder's model in a hangar at an airport somewhere in England, and it was in serious disrepair, so they, they took it back to a, a respiration expert. They restored it to what's in the Merseyside Museum today, but it's one of the Olympic class liners builders model. That much we do know. Um, I believe this is a what is it, a chamber pot. In any case, uh, this this piece of china. There's the statue and the piece of china that you were uh, asking about. That does seem to be authentic. The staining in the bottom. The fracturing of the glaze, that is all very in line with what one could expect from vintage China. The Lusitania, the, the fan, I believe is authentic, but I'm not entirely sure. A lot of these I am not going to be entirely sure on. Um, I, I have not ever been to the Merseyside Museum. I know of some of these artifacts. Um, again, the lifeboat plaque that you've got a photo of here, that I know is authentic. I believe there's only one or two of those left in existence that are authentic. Obviously, there's replicas, but there are not many authentic ones. The glass carafe, if not authentic, is a very good replica. Again, I'm not particular with this. I'm not familiar with these exact artifacts. Some of these do look like they have possibly been raised and restored. Um, the watch that you've got a photo of here definitely seems to be a raised and restored artifact. The White Star line, I believe it's a third class mug. It's very, very heavily fractured, I believe is authentic. The Iron Grill, this one I do know about. Um, or it's not iron, it's brass. Oh, I need to get some new footage up for you guys. Hang on a second. go and get a new media source. Okay, we have... Ah, this one. This is a bit of a classic. 
let's go ahead and get that brought up to full scale. So it, this is, uh, again, more footage from 2001. This one, a lot of you have probably seen chunks of it before and will be familiar with it from Ghosts of the Abyss. This was after they found the windows in the reception room. They went back in and had one of the mirrors pull around to the other side and shine their lights in through the windows. And this is the full set of footage from when they were doing that. Um, Lee, uh, as far as your photos go, I will likely go and leave some comments on individual photos after the stream ends. I, I would keep going through them, but there are quite a few of them, and people on stream are not going to have any idea what I'm talking about. So, just to recap for anyone who has uh, missed out on parts of the stream, we were talking about the possibility of an eventual 4K upscaling of our archive, which uh, just was, it's something we're looking at. We have software that's capable of doing it, and we've had some very promising results, but it's not going to be something that we can guarantee or promise. And if we do get to the point where we can commit to doing that, it is going to take a very long time. But there is a possibility that our footage is all going to be upscaled to 4K. Um, we also covered some of our frequently asked questions that I get on the Facebook page a lot. Um, for those of you that don't know, I tend to run the Facebook page for the most part. Uh, my wife, Alice, who is also one of our site editors and tends to do the final checks on everything before it gets published. She's also the one that has handled most of the uh, legal end of things as far as becoming a nonprofit. Uh, she tends to be very involved. We have a volunteer. His name is Garrett, who tends to write a good chunk of our descriptions uh, for more recently the Noah 2003 footage, but originally the James Cameron footage. Uh, he had quite a few that he wrote for that. Um... We, but I tend to run the Facebook page, and I tend to do most of the site editing for the most part. Uh, but if you're talking to someone through the Facebook page, it's usually going to be me, for the most part. Hi, Garrett! <laughs> I have been uh, somewhat struggling with this stream. We, we don't have many people here. I thought there would be more questions. Um, <laughs> I, I think here in probably about 15 minutes, I am going to call it a day uh, for, for the stream. I did, for anyone still watching, we have been working quite hard uh, this week to get ready for the update that's coming on next Sunday that, again, is going to add about four hours of new footage to the James Cameron section of our archive, and it's rebuilding the entire James Cameron collection from scratch. So that has been our week so far, and today I've been doing some more experimenting with the 4K upscaling, and so for the most part of this stream was I wanted to chat with people, and figured there was no reason to, to not. So if you guys have any questions for me about the archive, the project, any of the footage that we've got, or anything going on in the archive project's future, you can feel free to ask, and I will do my utmost to answer those. Hi from Titanic Connections. Uh, is this this is Jake? I believe it was with Titanic Connections. I saw your comment earlier. At some point, um, Matt and I we, we've been discussing trying to do more regular live streaming with a much more planned format. We've had the thought of trying to do kind of a guided tour sort of live stream of various parts of the rec where we go through a couple of the, the videos. Got to be some very rare footage about somewhere. Yes, there, there is. That's, I, I'm not sure. Hi, Jake. There is a ton more footage out there. Um, when they dive to Titanic especially with the mirrors, both of them are outfitted with cameras 
and in, in a lot of cases they're outfitted with multiple cameras and most of the time they are recording everything regardless of whether they want to or not it's a lot of time it's a legal thing where if a collision occurs for example it needs to be on video so they tend to keep cameras running at all times uh, our entire NOAA 2003 section was it's again two dives with both submersibles so by technicality it's four dives but recorded from start to finish each one lasting about four hours or about six hours so you have two full dives on mirror one two full dives on mirror two and that is something that We'll get into it in a minute. But they do have each expedition tends to film constantly when they're when they're on the bottom. And what we have is a grand total of 34 hours. There have been people who have individually spent more than 100 hours at the bottom. So we know for a fact that there is footage out there that we do not have. And a lot of it is going to be footage that people have never seen before. Or if they have seen it, they've only seen very brief snippets of it. The 2010 expedition is a great example. They had the Hercules ROV down on the wreck for, in some cases, days at a time, recording and photographing everything that it saw. But a grand majority of that footage has just never been released. And uh, again, that's part of why the Archive Project exists, is we know that this footage is out there, we know it's never been published, and we know that unless someone makes a very conscious effort to go and find that footage and work with the people who hold the rights to that footage to get it published, it just likely never will end up published. Uh, that That's kind of what happened with the 2003 footage that's on our website. Uh, that was... Noah filmed that, and... As with every government organization, the National Oceanic Atmospheric or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is required by law to publish everything that they film anywhere. Uh, it's it's all legally required to be public domain on creation. The problem is that NOAA, as a government organization, doesn't really have a huge vested interest in publishing that footage. Going to the rec site, it benefits them just purely from a scientific aspect. They can conduct experiments that they otherwise wouldn't be able to. They can attract funding more easily, I suppose. But for the most part, there's not really any motivation for them to publish that footage in an easily accessible format. So while they were technically legally required, well, not even technically, they were legally required to publish the footage they had from Titanic back in 2003, there's a phrase I like to use, is just close enough for government work. They will do enough to technically fulfill their legal obligations and call it a day. And as such, that 2003 footage that makes up a bulk of our archive, I'm not going to say where. It, it was available, but the amount of loopholes you had to go to, or to go through, in order to find it, it was, if you didn't know exactly what you were looking for and have someone hold your hand through the process of finding it, you were never going to know what you were looking at. And the only way to know what you were looking at was to submit a very detailed and specific order through a very deeply buried portion of Noah's website that specifically asked for every one of the videos that they had, not as a generalization. You had to go by name in order to get a hold of them. So they have always technically been publicly available, but I don't know if I've mentioned this in comment sections or in posts before. When we first got a hold of that footage and started working on the archive, we had never seen any of it. Nobody that we ever talked to had ever seen any of it. It got to the point where we were talking with people who had been on that expedition when the footage was filmed and had been waiting to see it ever since. And our archive was the first those people had ever heard of that footage being put anywhere. So while technically that footage has always been available, it's just so difficult to find that even people who were on the expedition were completely unaware that it had ever been published up until we put it on our site. And so the likelihood is that there is quite a bit more footage out there that is like that. And our team is almost every day checking every avenue, going down every rabbit hole we can find, trying to track down as much footage that has unfortunately suffered that same fate as we can get. And so far we have 
uncover about 34 hours, we know there's much more out there. And this is going to be a lifelong project for us. As long as we're around, there will always be somebody looking for this footage and trying to get it out to the public. It's It's been, for me personally, it's been a very rewarding experience, but it, it comes from the frustration of, I've been an enthusiast my entire life. I've wanted to see this footage. And you can find bits and pieces of it in documentaries, but unless you're willing to pay for those documentaries, which are 50 to 60 percent filling it with sensationalism and things that people already know and maybe 40 percent footage in some cases like uh, the the 2019 expedition is a fantastic example of this they licensed all of their footage to discovery so that discovery could make a documentary and then they spent months advertising this documentary that was going to showcase the first ever 4k footage filmed at titanic's rec site and then after months of being teased about this documentary, it comes out and it's been advertised as an hour long special and it comes out. It's 34 minutes of actual content, 26 minutes of advertising. And out of the 34 minutes of actual content, there was six minutes of rec footage and maybe know, 25 minutes of it was just surface footage, making things seem dangerous, talking about the significance of something that they saw, but never actually showing it, that kind of stuff. It's when you spend months waiting for the first expedition in 15 years to release their footage and they're advertising it so heavily, you just expect a bit more. And it was just the frustration with that documentary for the most part that drove myself and other members of this team to go and seek out footage that we knew existed, that had just never been released. And we've been successful so far. And I, I think that's very rewarding for me, personally, just to know that we've brought this footage out and made it as public as it is now. But we will continue to look, and anywhere that we can find it, we will work to bring it to the public. There are probably going to be cases where we find footage that we can't publish. Um, there's been, actually, I do know of one example of this already. Uh, there's something that we've been trying to get a hold of for the last few months. Uh, back in the 90s, when they went down and filmed, it was the IMAX movie Titanica. There were dozens of hours of footage that were filmed down there. You can find some of that footage. Uh, a lot of it is licensable. Uh, but even if you pay for a license for it, a lot of it can't be publicly shown unless it's in an edited format. And so we, we know of at least two or three more hours of footage that we just don't have because one, we have to pay for it and can't afford to. And two, even if we did pay for it, we wouldn't be allowed to publish it. Um, and there have been some developments behind the scenes that we're, we're still working on trying to acquire that footage by some means. But a lot of it is just... Even when we've found it, sometimes there's very little that we can do until we are able to raise the money to just pay for it outright. Or in some cases, we're hoping to do a tax incentive, as I mentioned earlier. But that has been one of the more frustrating things working with this is being able to find things in some cases that we're just not able to do anything about. And it has gotten to the point where sometimes I hear that there's going to be an expedition and that... National Geographic or Discovery is going to send out a camera crew with that expedition, and I'm excited up until I hear the point that a camera crew is being sent out to film a documentary, because I know that, that documentary is going to come out, and that's supposed to be exciting, but generally what that means is that out of the dozens of hours of footage that they're going to get on that expedition, the general public might end up getting access to five to ten minutes of it. But I'll, I'll end that rant there, because that's I, I could go on for days. Um, I do believe that's our, yes, that has ended. Alrighty, well, um, I've been on the air for about an hour now. I think for the day I'm going to call that, and at some point we'll likely stream again. I'm hoping to bring streaming into the Archive Project as a regular thing, just a lot more formatted. When people think of streaming, they generally think of something that's a little better organized. I like to have someone on stream with me usually to to have a back and forth and to make sure that I'm not saying something stupid because we all do. Um, 
but I am hoping to make streaming a, a regular thing with the archive project at some point. I'm just wanting to wait until we can schedule things that they're more structured and organized and not just me generally rambling about things. Uh, but with that, I hope everyone's enjoyed this stream and found something useful in it. Um, we'll have the update that I was talking about out on Sunday, and I'll be keeping you all posted through the Facebook page as usual. So uh, everyone have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will talk to you later at some point.